In the last episode of Revelation for Life, I looked at the realm of the spirit. Now I want to look at heaven. A lot is said about heaven, but a lot of what is said is actually inaccurate. I want to clear up some common misconceptions about heaven and shed some light. So you don't want to miss this. Stay tuned. When Jesus taught us to pray, he began by saying, Our Father, who is in heaven. Clearly, there is a place called heaven where God dwells, which is beyond our reach by physical means. It would be pointless to list all the references to heaven in the Bible. Jesus spoke of it. John saw it. Ezekiel saw it. Psalm 103 and verse 19 says, the Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. There's no denying that heaven exists. However, there are some misconceptions that I would like to clear up. First, streets of gold and pearly gates. There is actually nothing in the Bible to support the notion that heaven has streets of gold or pearly gates. The notion of a gold street is only mentioned once in the Bible, and it's only one street. This street is not in heaven at all, but in the New Jerusalem, which God gives as a gift to us in the book of Revelation. The same goes for pearly gates. This was an attribute of the New Jerusalem not of heaven. Revelation 21, 21 says, The twelve gates were twelve pearls, each gate made of a single pearl. The great street of the city was of gold, as pure as transparent glass. This is where this whole notion came from, of streets of gold and pearly gates. But this is not speaking about heaven, this is speaking about the New Jerusalem. Actually, the Bible doesn't really tell us much at all about the appearance of heaven. Glimpses of heaven in the Bible usually revolve around God's throne. But most of the imagery we have come to associate with heaven is actually the New Jerusalem and not heaven. Which brings me to my next point, man's inheritance. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 5 says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Heaven is not man's inheritance, the earth is. That's why there is so much description of the new earth and very little of heaven. God created the earth for man in Genesis chapter 1. This creation became corrupted during the fall of man. But the book of Revelation tells us that God is going to recreate the earth as a perfect creation. And this will be the inheritance of the faithful. A new earth with a new Jerusalem. So where does heaven come into the equation then? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 from verse 16 to 17 says, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Believers in Christ will be caught up to heaven in an event known as the rapture. We will be with the Lord forever, but not in heaven.
Revelation 22, from verse 3 to 5 says, No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. This verse is talking about the new earth, not heaven. God's throne will be in the new Jerusalem. There will be no sun because God will give light at all times. This means we will indeed be with him forever, but not in heaven. This doesn't mean that heaven is irrelevant though. We will be caught up to heaven before the new earth is created. We will spend a period of time with God in heaven. And he has prepared many dwellings for us to occupy during that time. John chapter 14 and verse 2 says, In my father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. Because I am going there to prepare a place for you. So there is still a lot to look forward to in heaven. Make no mistake about that. And, and the fact that we know less about our time in heaven than we do about our eternity in the new earth should make it all the more exciting. But what do we know about heaven? Well, there's lots of life in heaven. 2 Chronicles chapter 18 and verse 18 says, Micaiah continued, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne with all the multitudes of heaven standing on his right and on his left. There is also lots of worship in heaven. Revelation chapter 5 from verse 11 to verse 12 says, then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands and ten thousand times ten thousand. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Clearly, heaven is a place of worship of ongoing worship. So as I said before, if you don't like to worship, I suggest you learn fast. We will have new bodies in heaven as well. Philippians chapter 3 from verse 20 to 21 says, But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Jesus returned to heaven with a new body. So this means our bodies will be free from disease, pain, and death, just like his. Best of all, we will be with God. As I said before, there's a lot to look forward to in heaven. And all you have to do to book your reservation is have a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's not about being moral or following rules. It's about knowing Jesus Christ personally. That's all it takes. Until next time, this is Revelation for life.